the most important relationship you will ever have in your life isn't with your children, your parents, your friends. The most important relationship you will ever have, the one that will impact you far more than any other relationship is with your thoughts. They are your constant companion. Are they your ally, your critic, somewhere in between? Whoever taught us to become aware of our thoughts? We got no schooling in this. So we go through life kind of blindly, maybe according to the dictates of our culture, but thought tricks us. Right now, how many of you are aware of the thought you're having or your thought you just had? Okay. Was your thought telling you the truth about something? No. Could you share what your thought was that was telling you the truth? I'm hot. It's hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. I have a talk coming up here in August that will address that. Well, I used to go to sleep at night with my former wife. I'd say, it's hot in here. And she'd say, no, it's not. It's cold. This mindless back and forth went on forever. Finally, I realized I can't make an objective statement. So I said, I feel hot, because then she can't say to me, you don't feel hot. That didn't settle the problem with the thermostat, <laughs> right? But I learned to speak subjectively. Is anyone having a thought that what I'm proposing sounds hard to do? Yes. How do you know? Let's take a look at the thought, guys. You're having a thought that's telling you this is hard to do. Arguably, you've never tried, right? Old thought defends its territory. It's another reason we struggle with change. Old thought doesn't go easily. So the first thing we need to learn to do is see your thought. And there are techniques that I share and I teach people. You, it's like a muscle memory. If I can see my thought, then I don't have to be my thought. If I can't see my thought, I am imprisoned by the millions of thoughts I have, and I'm not even aware of having them. They're impressions. They just happen. So I realized that I wanted to develop the ability to see my thought. Now, if I can see my thought, that's what I call thinking. And here's the technique. When you have a thought or when you're talking to someone else, say to yourself or to someone else, you know I'm having a thought. Let me tell you what my thought is telling me. That's called participatory thinking. You can see the thought and not become it. Now, if you don't see the thought, the thought immediately summons up a feeling, an emotion, and you become that feeling. And that's why we spiral up and down in certain moods. We haven't been taught to master our thinking. It's just a thought. Now, if you have a thought that's particularly troubling, we can do a visualization like with Mary, where you put the thought out on the river, or simply, you go like this to the thought, shh, just let it go. Don't debate it. Don't replace it with another thought. Create the space to see the thought. There's nothing more powerful than that. And when we learn to communicate that way, we're no longer reactive. Because if I can see my thought and see my feeling, I'm not reactive. I'm responsive. I can say, you know, when you said that to me, I felt really upset. Let me tell you why. I noticed my feeling, but I didn't act upset. You can rise above your feelings, in this case, anxiety. So when you're feeling anxious or fearful, ask yourself, what is the thought that I had that set up that feeling? Go find it and then say, it's just a thought. And don't be tricked. The thought is telling you the truth. That is not thought's terrain. Thought doesn't determine the truth. I want the higher self, the thinking self, to decide what's true or not true. So sometimes people say to me, but I'm hardwired this way. Nope, we don't have any wires. That's old Newtonian, Cartesian thinking that told us reality is like a giant machine. And we became the cogs in that machine. We're not hardwired, we don't have wires. 
Anybody here ever walk at the beach and see their footprint in the sand behind them? Everyone. You wouldn't think that the sand created your footprint, would you? No. But we think, and I know we have a couple of physicians here who can take exception with this, we think that the brain produces thought. It doesn't. Your thought leaves its mark on the brain. Now, neuroscience is increasingly finding this true. The Dalai Lama years ago had a study done at Mount Sinai Hospital examining the brains of deep meditators who had completely different brain chemistry. But this is good news. If you're not hardwired and you suffer from anxiety or depression, if you learn to master your thinking and see your thought and feeling and not become it, you have a whole different experience. 